Hi, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about getting started with the Trees in the Meadow quilt using a very delicious range of fabrics by Newtex in New Zealand. So these are the fabrics that I'm using. They're a small range that they've put out. I've actually got a solid white in there, which is not particularly part of the range. We've got some wonderful birds, which of course you find in the meadow. We've got some leaves, that again, you find in the meadow. We've got some wonderful designs here that just complement everything. And then we've got some nice little trees that also live in a meadow. Um, so they're the, the fabrics, but then there's this wonderful panel stripe that uh, is part of the range. And this is five different fabrics across the width of one fabric. So the stripes run the length uh, you know, of the yardage. So we've got five fabrics in one here. So that's really exciting because the tree, um, the tree blocks and things run up and down, but we've used a sort of surround of each of the five colours from the panel stripe. So I thought, because it's just a little bit different to be cutting the panel stripes than just regular fabric, because you can't really just cut all the way across because other fabrics get in the way, I thought I'd just show you how I've gone about cutting the panel stripes. So I'll move those out of the way. And so this is a very delicious fabric. And I'm just going to, initially the best way I have found is just to cut the stripes apart. So I'm just going to cut off one stripe to show you because in fact they're all cut the same way. But I thought if I just do one at a time and I can just show you that and how it all fits on. So I'm just going to use my ruler and cutter and cut up on the dividing line there. Now these stripes are actually about eight and three quarter inches wide each. So we can pretty surely get eight and a half inches out, which is just as well because this pattern requires some bits that are eight and a half inches um, going across. Um, because some of the patterns that are printed here are, are one way designs, it might be a little bit confusing to see some of the fabrics turned around. Sometimes one way design fabrics do need to be cut just a little bit differently because of that. So I'm just coming all the way along the length of the piece of fabric we need for these wonderful trees in the meadow. Now I'm not going to cut the others up just now because it's the same thing. So you know what I've done now. We just have to do it again and again and again and again. So I'll just get that out of my way for the moment. So now I've got this strip here. And we do need just a couple of strips going across so that the, the design on the fabric is going in the right direction. So I'm just going to start, I'm using the board as well to help me, but because I've just cut that nice straight line, I know that edge is straight. So going across, I know that I need two one and a half inch strips. And they're for the very top and the bottom of the panel. Sorry, the strip with each colorway with the trees in it. And then they need to be cut to the correct width, but that's where your pattern will tell you what the width of those is. So we'll get those bits done first um, out of the way because those are going the other direction. Most of the other pieces are going up and down. So that's why we've cut those off first because they're going across. Now the next piece we need is about um, 28 inches long. So I'm going to come along, I've got it lined up again, and I'm going to cut off about 28 inches. Now that's given a little bit of leeway with what we're trying to do, so don't panic if it's not absolutely exact. And then I need to cut that down, but, I, but we need a five inch width of that, so I'm going to fold that up so that my ruler fits there, and I'm actually just going to trim off that edge that I had already cut, just to make sure that that's nice and even. And then I want to come across and do a five inch, one, two, three, four, five inch wide piece, because we need some pieces that are five inches wide with the pattern going in that direction. Pop that to one side. While I'm here, I also need some one and a half inch strips out of this piece that's left. And so I'm going to cut, you get two of those. See, and so it's, it's fairly tight, but there is enough room to do all this. So we can pop those to one side for the moment. This one here, we need some pieces that are four and a half inches by five inches. So this strip is actually, we know, five inches wide because we've just cut it. And now I'm just, I'm going to leave it double because we need six pieces. So again, I'm just going to trim off that little bit of extra 
and I'm going to come along here and cut it four and a half and at nine and again at 13 and a half. So again, a little bit tight, but there's enough fabric there. So we've got enough to trim off to straighten up. Those are one and a half inch strips that we need to cut the right length. These are some one and a half inch strips that we also need to cut the right length. These are our four and a half inch by five inch strips that are now cut the right length. We then need another piece um, here that's going to be about 18 inches long. This is all in the pattern. However, I just thought I'd show you so that you can see how it's all done. So that's going to be 18 inches long. And again, I'm just going to fold that in half so that it fits my ruler. And I'm going to just trim off here. And now we need some strips. We need four strips out of this that are one and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to come across and do that. And this piece here is actually spare. So those need to be cut to a certain length. And again, all that information is in your pattern. So they all need to be cut down to the right lengths. Those are correct. This is some spare. And you're thinking, well, what is all this that's left over here? Well, this has a purpose too. So I'm going to pop those out of the way for the moment. So remember, we're doing all five colours on this panel stripe the same way. So now on here, we've got some applique. So our trees are all applique. And there's four different sizes of tree. There's different colour combinations. So I'm just going to show you. I've already cut out my fusible web for that. And on this gray, I'm going to bring the iron over because I might as well iron them on while I'm here. So the, the, the gray has the most colors. So we've got to make sure that these are all going to fit. Now, I've used the um, steamer seam for this. And the steamer seam has paper both sides and it gets a little bit sticky. So I'm going to pop that on. So I'm going to peel off. Make sure your sticky stays on the side you've done the drawing on. So I'm going to position that. So we're going to trust that all of this is going to fit this piece of fabric. And I'm pretty confident it will. So we're going to position those on. And some more. So there's quite a few little bits to do for the applique, but they're not hard pieces to applique. So I've finished positioning these. I'm just going to iron them in place. You can see there's not a lot of space, but there is enough room. Some of these stems could come down here and things. I think you'll find that um, if you're just a little bit careful with your fabric, there's actually plenty there. This gray one that I've done first uses the most up for the applique. The others have a little bit more leeway. That's uh, why I showed you on the gray, because I thought it would be best to show the one that's got the tightest space-wise space on it. So I'm just going to iron. Now I have to go and cut all those out, of course. But So that's everything that you need on one of the panel stripes. So as I said, there's four of them. They've all got the same initial cutting with all the pieces. And then they've all got some applique in, in varying. I've already got them ready here. Um, but the grey uses the most up for the applique, so the others will have a little bit more space around them. So I hope that's a little bit helpful, and that's how I've done the cutting. Okay. I thought I'd show you just how I've gone about doing the applique. Um, so I've gone ahead, I've traced all my shapes, I've cut them all out, and I just thought I'd show you about the positioning just so that we get them right. So I'm just going to bring the iron over, and I've cut my background rectangle out. So this is the second size, uh, not the smallest, the next one up. And I'm just going to do a little finger press up the center. So just a light press. You don't want this to be um, too noticeable. It's just to help with positioning. So I'm going to lay that down. And then with my uh, tree trunk, I'm going to position that first. So I'm going to come up maybe a bit over half an inch or thereabouts 
we're going to lose quarter of an inch in the seam, so we want it to sit just above the seam. So maybe just over half an inch there. And then I can iron that one in place. Then I'm going to put the big main part of the tree on. And I'm going to, when I put that on, again, with this finger press centre line, I can get an idea. So I'm going to overlap the tree trunk a little bit, make sure there's a little bit of room at the top. And you want it to be a similar amount of room either side. So that looks fairly similar to me. That looks pretty straight. Tree hopefully is not blowing in the wind. Iron that one in place. And then there's these two little bits that go on top to give a little bit of interest, kind of dissecting the tree and looking inside. But to do that, we want that centre line back again, but we want it on the tree top as well this time. So I'm just going to do the again a little finger press there and that helps with positioning this so that this goes on that center line and again you want to keep an eye on how that's sitting top and bottom with your gap here and here it's not an even gap all the way around it's just getting it fairly centered top to bottom and then the next one goes on top of that and that just does the same thing just line that up so i find that it's quite good to put everything all on at once and then when we do the stitching, and I'll show you that in just a moment, we can, we can do the stitching so that we don't have to stop and start too many times in a couple of, of goes. So that's the tree all ironed on. So to do the stitching now, I'm going to use a machine blanket stitch and go all around the edges. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to come around the tree trunk, and then continue on all the way around the tree till I meet back up at the stitching here, and then I can tie off. And then when I do this one, I'm going to start here and I'm going to come all the way around that shape, come up the center onto this other shape all the way around again till I come up to where I, till I meet the stitching there and then I can tile. So in two goes, we can do all the blanket stitching, so not too many tiles. So I think that's great. So I'm going to go to the machine now and I'll show you just a little bit of the stitching so that you can just see what I'm doing. So I'm starting at the tree trunk on one side and coming round the tree trunk first. When I get to the corner, so if you can have your needle in the down position, that's really helpful. When you get to the corner, you want to stop right at the corner, needle down, lift, and I just turn so that the next stitch that comes into the applique goes onto the applique, back to the corner, turn again, and continue on to the next corner in the same manner. You usually find you can stop pretty much on a corner. So then I come up this way and then I get up, up to the tree and again I do the, t the corner thing. Always stop with your needle on the right hand side or on the background fabric turn that around and now I can happily go all the way around that tree. I've come all the way around here, I've finished up back where I went onto the tree, I've joined up again, I've tied off my threads and now I'm going to come up and start at the top of this smaller segment here and come all the way around and go all the way around again. So this isn't taking too long, it's kind of fun. And again, when you're going around these curves, just remember just stop and ease rather than rather than pulling your fabric around because that can skew your stitches. It's good to stop every few stitches and just line it up so that everything is going nice and straight. And then when I get up to this corner here, I'm going to do the turning thing. Leave the needle down, turn and come straight up that straight line. I'm just going to snip off this thread here of my way. And so then I can continue all the way around again until I come right round and join up where I started stitching. So just coming up to the last corner. Very exciting. And stop at the corner, pivot, do a little stitch into the corner. and come back up to where I started or where that joins into the stitching and that's the applique done.
finished all the applique. Everything's looking pretty good on the back and the front, in fact. Um, so to do this quilt, we've got 10 trees. We've got three different, sorry, four different sizes. So we've got a shorter one. We've got a, this is the second row one. Then they're a little bit taller and taller again. So there's 10 trees all together. Happy making tree time and uh, enjoy the rest of it. So that was just a little bit of uh, help just to show you how I've gone about doing the app.